that's about right. Would you please welcome to the stage, Chris May! Good evening all, it works, that's always good. Uh, good evening all, um, I'm Chris Mills, I, and now I'm a structural engineer, a uh, relatively young one as well. Um, the theme of my nine minutes, it's the time of going, yes it is, shit, it's 20 seconds already. Uh, the theme of my nine minutes is all about the struggle between the architect and the engineer, or otherwise uh, the dreamer and the pragmatist. Um, so, looking back a few years, 1920, um, the idea of one-upmanship between nations in terms of building the tallest, biggest, most grandest, uh, swaying structure they can uh, has been around for a while. And in 1920, communist Russia was the new kid on the block. Um, and what they did, Stalin and co, they commissioned a young, bright uh, architect called Vladimir Tatlin, um, and they asked him to finalise his proposals for um, the Monument to the Third International aka the Tatlin's Tower. So this gives you an idea of the scale of the proposal at the time in context of the tallest structures and biggest structures in the world at the time. Um, there's three things that the Tatlin's Tower is going to be some bit symbolic for. Uh, number one, um, it was going to be the tallest building in the world. Uh, and not only that, it was actually going to be 100 metres taller than the next building structure, um, which was the Eiffel Tower at the time. Uh, number two, um, it was going to use sort of new age materials. So this is a time when classical architecture was still big, um, and Stalin and uh, the communist regime wanted to show to the world um, that we're a sort of a new age um, economy, and we're going to demonstrate that uh, we're using steel, glass, uh, iron to create this spiraling steel lattice uh, of, a, of a structure. Uh, and thirdly, um, they wanted their structure to be a functional building, so not just a monument for monument's sake, uh, but a building that could house operations for the state. Um, and part of this was to include three large rhomboidal shapes. I really like the idea of rhomboidal shapes. Um, but rhomboidal, um, so the largest rhomboid uh, was a cylinder, uh, which was going to be 90 metres by 90 metres, sort of similar scale, bigger than uh, St Paul's Cathedral. And not only this, but it would be hung from this steel lattice and in addition to that, it would also rotate. Um, and um, there was actually going to be three rhomboids, uh, and the tallest one, which is a smaller cylinder, but still very big in scale, was going to rotate once a year, and it was going to project propaganda onto the clouds. Um, the locals of St. Peter's are to see, as you do. Right, so um, this is an amazing photograph, and Tatlin is fifth from the left, and this is, was taken in 1920, and he spent a large portion of his summer uh, creating this five metre tall model uh, in order to present it uh, to the Russian Federation uh, to prove the viability of his scheme. This is as far as the scheme ever got. Uh, why did it not go any further? Hopefully I'll share a bit of light on that. Um, but the idea is, uh, so yeah, so it never got any further than that, and over the next kind of couple of minutes, I'm going to have a look at well, how or reimagine the discussions uh, that the engineer might have had with the architect. And um, how, going back to the title, uh, how an engineer might have reigned on this architect's parade. Right. Comrade Christophe, hello. Ah, Vladimir! Welcome, welcome. Pleased to meet you. You probably heard of me. I'm a very famous very famous Russian architect. I won a very prestigious competition to be here today. Very pleased to meet you. Very pleased to meet you. Great to see you, Vladimir. I'm not entirely sure why this is necessary. Let me give you a bit of background. So, Stalin's been in contact and he's asked me to look at the personal friend yes, of mine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, he's asked me to look at the structural feasibility of your uh, your scheme, and it's visionary. It's great. It's great, Vladimir. But I agree. There's a, there's I agree. A, there's a few things that I just want to go through with you, particularly in terms of buildability structures, um, and hopefully we can come to some sort of agreement in a, in a design that will work visionally and also structurally. 
Um, so you are going to agree with me? No, let, let's, see, let's, 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 let's see how that let's work. see how that goes, Vladimir. Right. So, Vlad, this you is like your my drawing? this is your key drawing. Do you want to explain to me before I talk to you about how you? plan to provide stability to this 400 meter tall structure? Yes, an uh, important feature of the scheme is, um, uh, we call it the Megatrust. Megatrust? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, I, I've made model yes. uh, using string. Nice. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I, I think I, 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 used, um, I used some timber for this piece okay, here. Okay, great. It's about... Uh, okay, okay I'll stop you there, uh, Vladimir. Okay. Yeah, so I've done a markup uh, on your drawing. Um, I sent it with my messenger the other day, but I, I, it sounds like you might not have got it. Um, so there's a few things, uh, or three things in particular in terms of stability that I want to discuss. Um, so we're dealing with a structure... It's not, it's not as nice. If you bear with me, Vladimir, bear, bear with me. Is it? A 400 meter tall skyscraper, so we've got wind speeds at another scale at this kind of level. Um, and your whole building is trying to sway over. Um, so I've noticed your sort of mega columns. What I think we can do is... Can yes, I, I, like, I like mega columns. Yeah, but... yeah. Mega columns I love. I think we can brace them up and we can provide a really stiff core. What is, what is um, bracing? And the idea is just a few more steels, just a bit, nothing, nothing major. Um, the other thing, this slant. Now, I know you proposed a 23.5 degree angle to meet the, the Earth's tilt. I, I understand that. Um, however, in terms of the building, um, we're basically starting in a bad place because we're already trying to effectively go base over apex before we even started. So, what we need to do, we just have to sort of straighten out a bit. It's fine, it won't be an issue. I think we um, have expression for this in the question. Yeah. It's called ass over tit. Yes, <laughs> exactly that, exactly. Um, and the final thing, some of these members you're proposing, 120 meters unrestrained length. I'm not going to go into any detail, um, but the trusty no, modeler, it if you effect didn't, effectively, effectively, Vlad, Vlad um, your building is going like this, um, <laughs> and we need to just put a few more restraints. So I've done the work for you, um, if I can find this, and um, I've done a little modification, <laughs> nothing major. I know, I can see your face. Not, Let's come on to it in a second. Uh, so the, the rotating volumes. I've also got a slight uh, concern about one or two of these aspects as well particularly in terms of this mechanism of the rotating um, and I can't quite see how it's going to work with this truss. So, don't worry, I've come up with an idea, right? And, it's, and you're going to love it, okay? You're going to love it, Vlad. All right, so, in the middle of your structure, going from top to the bottom, I'm proposing we put in a gigantic circular fuck off concrete core. Right? What, what okay. is that? So, uh, hold on, hold on. What, what is concrete? So, concrete hasn't really been fully established in this way yet. I don't think it's been invented. No, you <laughs> Actually. Well, a minor formality, Vlad. Um, so, the, the idea is that we'd have these mechanisms that go between the core and your, your kind of volumes can cantily rough that. So, I think it'd be great. Looking now at something like this, basically the same scheme. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think it was fake. So, which I actually, before you say anything, Vlad, Final thing, right? So I, I, I need to get to the quantities because this is serious now. Actually, you know how Stalin is with quantities. Um, what's bottom of front Yes. Um, so I've used uh, an I analysis like, program. I like, I like from the, yeah, I yeah. like the colours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't get too hooked up on the colours. Purple is bad. Um, orange is good. Uh, that's all you really need to know. Um, and I've done some quantities. So the Eiffel Tower was talking 7,300 tons of iron, which used in that structure. Um, we've been given a target of 25,000 tons. Having done the sums and the, you know, the engineering analysis... It's okay. it's we're, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're now looking, we're oh, now looking at a, a building... Joseph's um, going to be really pissed off. Sort of re ...requiring 344,000 tons of steel. That's about 50 Eiffel Towers. <laughs> sort of melted down and, and sort of reform to create this structure. I think that the, uh, the, it's okay. uh, the a Soviet solution. iron foundries will be, will, they'll, they'll be fine. Now, they'll, they'll cope. There is, basically, there's physically not enough iron in the world. <laughs> um, so, value engineering. This is what we're going to go for. I've given you three options we can agree today. Option one, right, I like this. We take a third of your structure, any third that you like. <laughs> 
have we, have we placed at the bottom, sort of maintain some of the original aspiration. Option two, we scale it down in all directions, get a bit more height, obviously slightly less floor area. And the third option, my favourite actually, um, is to have a landscape feature. And what we can do is we can have a helter-skelter in the corner of the park. <laughs> what do you think? Being, I'm not being funny with you, Chris. <laughs> I do not like any of your ideas. No? No. So, Vlad, the thing is, you know Stalin's a serious man. I um, <laughs> Yes. And he is a client at the end of the day. So, I need to get you to pick one. Comrade Crystal. Yes. <laughs> I do not build to have clients. I have clients to build. <laughs> <laughs> At so this point, I need to strop off out of here. Okay. Good day to you, sir. If that's going to be, that's a, hold on one sec before we do the clap. Goodbye, Vlad. Okay. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's fine. You can go. Chop chop. Uh, so stepping out. Obviously, Talon's Tower was never built, and neither were any of these three schemes. Thankfully, that's not to say it didn't inspire engineers and architects of the future for visionaries, um, and for good or for worse. Thank you. <laughs>